What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, Jason the X, back with another figure review, and today we're looking at the Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure Stiltman Wave, and I like this wave, it's a pretty good wave, I'd say every figure in this one is a solid one, okay, for different reasons, but everyone is fair, okay, fairly solid, there's a couple of things I don't like, so we'll get into that, I don't even want to review this wave, um, in a ranking order, just because I like all of them so much, there's a few nitpicks here and there, which I'm sure we're gonna get into it. Of course, in this wave, we have the Hand Ninja, who's gonna be the Build-A-Figure for this wave. We have the Prowler from Into the Spider-Verse. We have Gwen Stacy, Ghost Spider, Spider-Woman. I believe she was Spider-Woman, just Spider-Woman in Into the Spider-Verse. She comes with Spider-Hand, by the way. We have Miles Morales. We have Peter B. Parker, all these characters from the Spider-Verse. And we have Frogman. They made a frog man. I'm still processing that. And of course the build a figure is stilt man. And there's a really unique thing about this wave and we'll get into that when we get into the review of stilt man. But anyway, let's take a look at these guys individually. Like I said, no particular ranking order. Um, I think all of them are equally good. So let's get into it. So take a look at the first figure in the wave. We have the hand ninja. Now this isn't the worst figure. It's just, you know, it's basic. It's an army builder. And I think for a generic bad guy figure, this is pretty good. I, I, I like having just a generic bad guy. And of course, it's a ninja. You know, ninjas are good. That, I, there's a couple things I'll, I'll talk about. It. But anyway, let's look at the box that he comes in. We got build a figure Silk Man up there. Marvel's the hand ninja on the side. I look at that hand ninja. And they always had like weird mystical stuff going on with him. So his eyes are going, going green. You can even say this is a different hand ninja over here. And on the back. Skilled in martial arts and espionage, the ninjas of the hand are a force to be reckoned with. Yes, they are. I love the packaging artwork there. And you see Stilt Man is the figure. Now, the thing about number five here is Stilt Man, as many as you buy, uh, every, every hand ninja you get, you get another set of legs. The legs are about six inches long. So I'll leave you to guess how many hand ninjas I have bought. So, hint, it's every one I've seen so far. <laughs> Oh, which hasn't been many. Will there be more to come? Who knows? Anyway, taking a look at the hand ninja, we'll zoom in a little bit here on the face. You can see those green eyes. The look on his face looks more, I don't know. It looks like he's more surprised than he is like, you know, I'm going to kill you. But it is pretty good. This bandolier really looks like something Storm Shadow would wear. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. But he's, you can see his... Uh, Suit on underneath, you got the hand wrappings, which, hand wrappings, arm wrappings, <laughs> well, he's wrapped, uh, which look kind of armored. They don't exactly look like they're wrappings. The belt, uh, nice, nice cloth looking. On the back, you got his sword sheath. You can store one of his weapons there. Be careful on the sheaths because they, they uh, tend not to come out straight, so it's going to warp the weapon if it's in there too long, but it does store in there very well. But it, the robes look really good on this guy. The hood is actually attached to the head, so it'll move around as you move around. I kind of wonder, did they borrow a little bit from Storm Shadow, but, you know, they are two Hasbro lines made. Might see some people kind of uh, borrowing pieces from other lines. Got the pants that look pretty good. You got the tabby boots there, made in that same color, which they got buckles on there and everything. I question if we've seen that before. I'm not sure what we may have seen it in, but yeah. The hands are colored um, flesh. I I guess that, that's okay, yeah. I mean, I, I saw someone paint them red to match, but I think it works. Yeah, it works. So articulation, well, first, accessories. He does come with a Ninjato. See here, you got some silver on the blade. Very, very cleanly decked out, I think. It works for what it is. I love seeing this particular blade in uh, Marvel Legends instead of just another katana. And he comes with a comma, which has also got that same silver on there. Looks pretty good. You can see like wrappings on the handle. But it does look good. And as you saw before, you can hold any one of those weapons. The only thing is he can only sto store the sword I kind of wish he, he was able to store the the comma as well. I mean, I've, I've been putting them in here, but you know, the, it works. 
for now it'll stay there but i kind of wish there was storage for it just because you know they're not going to always have the weapons in their hands these guys are hand-to-hand -hand combatants now we did get a hand ninja once in marvel legends but that was a just kind of a recolor of a ronin figure so this guy's kind of original i, I didn't want to dig that ronin figure out though just because you know i'm lazy so instead i brought a figure that could probably relate to a hand ninja more than anybody and that is my wolverine my brown suit wolverine because these guys have uh, been at it for years so i think it's a good comparison they, they these guys look good together and stop falling over you're you're, you're embarrassing me logan and um uh, i think it'll be look, looks good it'll look good in any diorama you have where he's chopping their limbs off or something but they do look really good together articulation wise you do have a peg in the foot on a disc hinge that is at the ankle so you can go that far down i mean you're gonna need a lot of posability these are ninjas you can go about that far up all the way around the peg in the foot you have a cut at the calf there 360 degrees can't kick his own butt that's about as far as he can go but of course he does have the uh the mold the uh, i can't talk the sculpt from the molding of the clothing you got 360 degree peg at the thigh he van daminates about that far you got a ball joint at the top of the torso and you have just a uh, hinge ball joint at the bottom but it's deep and it's hidden by the uh the bottom of the robe which is kind of cool butterfly joints on these guys i like butterfly joints love my butterfly joints 360 degree at the bicep of course you got a universal jo joint at the shoulder goes up about that far and that'll go 360 degrees there the, he he does have double jointed elbows sadly really you're only going to get something out of the bottom half of that everything else is like maybe one one click at the top so yeah that's all you're going to get and 360 degree swivel at the wrist that go horizontally on the left one and the right one is hinged vertically but yeah these guys that hold their weapons okay i think they're pretty cool we're going to go ahead and put his weapons in there now your hand ninjas are going to come in just about six and three quarter inches tall and the next figure we'll be taking a look at in the line is Marvel's Frogman. Look, I didn't think we were going to get this figure. I didn't think we were going to ever get this figure. It's Frogman. But they went there. It gives me hope that they're going to actually make a, mo or a, a, a toad one day. So we can have a toad and a Frogman. Ah, I'm here all week. Anyway, let's get him out of the way. <laughs> It's the best figure of the line, guys. Anyway, you got uh, the box art here. Marvel Stilt Man right there. It's got the cityscape on the background. Marvel's Frogman on the side. Look at that artwork. Look at that. You can see his eyes inside the frog costume. And on the back, Eugene Patilio suits up as Frogman in a misguided attempt to restore his family's good name. Yeah, because there was a whole history, and I'm not going to get into the history of Frogman on this channel. Maybe it's something we'll do on the other one. But anyway, here is the Frogman figure. Look at this, man. Just, just look at this. Tell me this isn't the greatest thing ever. You can see there are his eyes peeking out from the costume. Let's go ahead and just bring that in a little bit. So... Yeah, you can see they did mold a uh, face in there covered up by a black mask, but ignore that. Just look at the eyes here and this neck piece. I mean, this thing looks about as cheesy as it gets, and I wish they were making it up, but this is how Frogman looks. Yeah, he's got his backpack. I honestly don't know what his backpack does. You're going to have to just trust me on this. He uses the Doc Ock body, you know, on a little bit of a heavier scale. You got the you know the, the the design here and then uh flippers you've got flippers but to top it off he has coiled springs on the back of his suit because his power is jumping is jumping with a frog costume now the figure doesn't come with any accessories he does come with interchangeable hands open and uh, a fist i've got the spares right here so you know it's just that just an open hand and a closed fist. Whoops. And there it goes. For comparison, here he is next to an equally as ridiculous character of 
White Rabbit, which also didn't think they'd ever make a figure out of her. He comes in at just about six and a half inches tall at the top of his eyeballs. Articulation wise on these big flipper feet, you've got uh, a, uh, <laughs> this is a feet make me laugh. He has a disc hinge with the pin in the foot. You can go all the way around that peg going into the foot. Uh, it does have a tilt, of course, that you can make use of with the peg going into the foot. He does have a cut at the calf, three, or, yeah, at the calf, 360 degrees. Double jointed knees. He's he's kind of heavy set, so he can't quite kick his own butt. He's got a uh, 360 degree swivel at the thigh. He can van daminate about yay far. Uh, no waist articulation, but he does have a ball joint at the torso. Very, very nice ball joint, by the way. Goes forward about that far, goes back about that far, can go to the side. Yeah, that's, that's a good ball joint. Uh, no uh, butterfly joints. I like my butterfly joints, even on a guy like this, who's ridiculous, but he has earned a spot on the shelf. Got a, a universal joint. Goes up and out about that far. Will do a 360 degree turn. You do have a twist at the bicep. I don't like how the arms are very gappy here, but it, it is what it is. You can do a 300, because it, and also this, this seems weak here, like this is going to break, so I'd be careful with that. You've got double jointed elbows, only goes about that far. You have a cut at the wrist, and these hands are all hinged horizontally to go back and forth. The head is on a ball joint, and I have popped this off to see if there was like more face underneath there. It's, it's not, if you look, it just kind of stops right in there, like right under his lip, and I'm kind of scarring the finger a little bit here. But it is a ball peg, but if you look up in there, there's no extra face. It stops right there, and it's just painted black. And getting that back on there, but yeah. Marvel's Frogman finally got a figure in this line, and I don't know whether I'm, I, I'm not happy or upset about this at all. It just is what it is. It's Frogman. Give us a Toad now. There's no excuse. Give us give us Toad in an X-Men line. And the next figure in the line we're going to be taking a look at is the Prowler figure from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And I really like this figure. Um, I love the designs from Into the Spider-Verse. So everything from here on is all Spider-Verse. So it's going to be awesome. So let's get the Prowler out of the way and bring in the box that he comes in. You've got the Spider-Verse logo embossed up here. Of course, the little figure Stilt Man. Spider-Man and Spider-Verse, Marvel's Prowler. On the side, you've got Miles' uh, uncle right there. Equipped with an armored suit and gadget-filled wrist gauntlets, Prowler pursues his enemies under the cover of darkness. Prowler pursues. I almost like tongue-twisted on that one. but Getting the figure in here, it's pretty good. This, it translates so well from what we saw on the screen from that awesome movie this is the best spider-man movie ever made but uh yeah looking at it he looks good i think the collar comes a little bit too far forward i i, I really can't find anything to criticize this figure on honestly it looks just really good as is got the prowler logo on here you've got some paint the paint is kind of weird on the gauntlets because it's like overlapping a little bit it's it's a little slop but uh it it, it it comes through you got the belt nice buckle you got a little bit of paint on the belt and these little designs here, pouches molded in on the sides. His cape does peg in to a hole on the back and they did get everything back there. It's kind of hard to get this back on here though. Because if you see, it's because of where the head is and getting this like piece that goes around his neck to stretch enough to get that peg back on there. And even, okay, it is. Seems like it's a little too big for the hole that it's going in, but it does get there pretty well. You got some more pink detail on the boots, of course. That light, lighted uh, design that they had on the suit. I don't like this arm, how it, it, it doesn't like get completely straight. Like this is it, this is it fully, fully open on both joints and they, they just kind of like still bent. And it's okay, it's, it is what it is. But, Articulation wise, you've got another disc hinge with the pig with the disc hinge with the peg going into the foot, goes around, goes back and forth. You've got that there. You've got a cut at the calf. The legs are double joint, the knees are double jointed, goes up about that far, far from kicking his own. But 360 degree at the calf. He can van daminate pretty far. Pretty far. Got a 
swivel at the waist, hinge joint at the torso, no butterfly joints. I will point that out when they don't add those in, but you will do a 360 at the shoulder, goes out about that far in a universal joint, double jointed elbows right there. And the hands are uh, articulated horizontal or vertically here on both hands. And I got some nice detail on these like claws with the paint and everything. Look at, and I've already popped this out of place again. But yeah, the Prowler figure looks pretty good. For comparison, here he is with the Marvel Comics Prowler. And you can see kind of the uh, inspirations that they took. I like the less green in this costume and then this one, but it, this is Comics Prowler. That it is what it is. And this Prowler comes in at about six and three quarter inches tall to the top of his cape. And next figure, we've got Gwen Stacy, or Ghost Spider, or Spider Woman, as she was called in the film. I like Spider Woman, honestly. And this is a really good Gwen Stacy. Like, I, I have the uh, other Gwen Stacy figure, which we'll be comparing her to in this video. And uh, I kind of like this one better. I just do. It, it has more of a... It has that cartoony aesthetic, but still, this could easily take the place of your Ghost Spider on your shelf, just because I think it's I think it's a better figure. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get her out of the way. And this is actually a twofer pack as well, because you got build a figure stilt man, you got the Spider Man boss there, Gwen Stacy. On this side, you have old Gwen from the movie, and on this side, you have Spider Ham because you get the ham in this one. So we're gonna get to that anyway. Getting uh, looking at the box, intelligent and quick-witted, Gwen has a sharp sense of humor and is a natural leader. I couldn't agree more. So anyway, let's just get to the one accessory that she does come with, and that is the spider ham. So this is her accessory. I mean, she's got other accessories, but this is going to be a quick look at this figure. Um, he uh, is a static figure. Nothing can move on him except for this big old head, which is on a ball joint that pops off pretty easily. And you can put anyone's head on there, you know, if you want to just make a statement. Just saying that's one of Gwen's accessories. But yeah, you can pop the head off. And it is a little hard to stand, just kind of he, his 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 feet are very flexible. Here he is neck, here he is compared to the comic spider ham that we got. I mean, people complain about this figure not having a lot of articulation. I mean, at least this guy was a pack-in for another figure. So yeah, you get spider ham, but uh Getting him close. I mean, you got the look on, you got the spider look on his face. No mouth or like the spider ham. He does have a little bit of damage like under his neck here. I don't know what that is. But yeah, got the black and white picked out there. The ears look good. They're very flexible. Turn him around. He does have a cute little curly tail back there. And he has very shallow pegs in his feet. But yeah, not much to say about this fig, except it is pretty represent representative of what we got in the movie. Do I want something articulated? Honestly, probably not. I I don't know. I don't. It would be small. No, it would have been one whole figure and they would have charged us full price for it. So this is fine for me. It fills out a Spider-Verse shelf. I think we got a couple other figures to go. Anyway, let's go ahead and bring in Gwen here. Or Gwanda. Whatever her <laughs> name is. And this is the civilian head, which looks really good. Uh, Nate actually got this figure and he complained that about the mouth, but I don't he that you couldn't see teeth in there and it just looked kind of weird. I guess I can see it a little bit. She does have that little detail of her uh, eyebrow ring there. I love the shaved head. The hair looks really good. Pretty much per perfectly captures that. I love the, I love the design of this costume though, with the color on the inside of the arms, the simple black and white, but with the splashes of the color. I do I do really like the Ghost Spider costume. And getting down, she's got the black legs. There's the blue ballet slippers, which, you know, they, they look good. This is all molded here, unlike the uh, the figure that we got with that um, Miles figure. It was just like repaints of everything. But I think this is pretty good. Now, her accessory is that she comes with. She comes with two thwipping hands, which are all going to be, all of her hands are going to be hinged horizontally. But, yeah, you got the thwipping hands. Let me move this down so you can see it a little bit better. And they're just cast in a white plastic. And you also get a masked head, which looks really good. 
Mine has like a little black divot there, something that I could probably work with later. It looks like they missed a little bit of paint around the eyes on this side, but looking straight on at it, it doesn't matter. I just need to get something in there and uh, see if that'll come out or whatever. Uh, it is attached to the hood. And what you do is you just take her head off here. That's on there pretty good. She does have the hood down option here. And we're just going to leave that on for the rest of the review. And boy, that, that head is on there. It? It's really stiff. But yep, so there's a look at the head on the body. And I think it looks pretty good. It works. It, it looks very disconnected, though. I don't know, I know how I'm feeling about that. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just look at the articulation on Gwen here. She does have the same thing. A little bit of slop with the with the paint on these ballet slippers as well. She got the disc hinge with the peg into the foot. Complete 360 goes back very far. Goes forward yeah, pretty good, too. Pretty good. Uh, cut at the calf, 360 degrees. Double jointed. And she actually was, uh, I don't know if she kicked her own butt or it was just me. But, nope, she can't kick her own butt. You do have a 360 degree at the thigh. Van Daminate's about yay far. I really want these spider, pe spider people figures to Van Daminate further. Hell, full Van Damnation. It's got a ball joint at the torso. Goes forward, not a lot. But back about yay far, side to side. It's pretty good. Now, of course, we got that ball jointed head. Now, oh, I guess my hood wasn't attached to it. I thought it was glued on there. I think it's just a very tight fit, but it's definitely, because uh, I really haven't messed with this. I've, ha I've had the civilian head on there. Uh, universal joint at the shoulders goes all the way up about that far. We'll go back and around. Cut at the elbow. Well, the peg is inside of the bicep, so that's where you're going to get your twist. Not double jointed, but pretty good articulation in the elbow, and all the hands are horizontal and can make a 360 degree spin on that wrist. And this, man, this ball joint at the head, it is very, very stiff to move around. I hope that is not something that will affect uh, the peg or wear it down or something. But yeah, the Spider Gwen, pretty dang good. And for a comparison shot, here she is next to a couple of the Gwen Stacy's released in the line. We've got uh, her symbiote form. We've got the one that was previously released with the um, Wrecking Ball and I believe another Spider-Man. And she comes in at just about 5 and 7 eighths inches tall. Next in the wave, coming from the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, we have the Miles Morales figure. And this is Miles in his uh, gear that we see him in when he discovers that, that awesome scene where he's swinging through the city. Now, this figure could have been better because it was the one I was probably most anticipating. But there are just some things that just I I really wish they had done different to make this figure just, it would have been perfect for me. But anyway, let's go ahead and get Miles out of the way. Let's look at the box that he comes in. You've got uh, Marvel Legends series. You've got the spider logo and boss there. Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales. You have him on the side. The great artwork there. And this let, let's take note of this expression on his face. Also, you got this... A little spray painted Spider Man right there. I like that. And I, this thing's just slipping out of my hands. A Brooklyn native and just 13 years old, Miles Morales is a Spider Man unlike any we've ever seen before. They couldn't be more correct. But here's the thing now, now they pretty much, this figure is almost perfect. And you can, you can argue with me because I, it's, it's nothing personal. I just wanted it to be really, really good. And so the first issue that I have is mine has a little defect. He's got a little bit of paint there. I'm not sure how to clean that. I don't want to mess up the paint on the figure, but I don't like the expression on his face. It's a very worried expression. And by the time we see Miles like this, he's a little bit more sure of himself. I kind of wish we had gotten just a different expression. It's fine though. It's fine. The hair looks good. I like this is, you know, looks good. Paint looks good. I like this hood. I wish there was an option for a raised up hood because of another accessory it has. You got the jacket with the hoodie underneath it. You can see the spider logo underneath. Looks good. I really want a spider figure like this though. Without the jacket and everything, just the, just the spider. Maybe they could have done something like Mafex did with the interchangeable arms, and but that figure costs a lot more and it's got cloth goods. I'm not gonna go on too much about it. You got the shorts, you can see the belt there. And coming down to the legs, you got the uh, you can see the suit leggings. He's still wearing his Jordans. 
which look really good. The paint's good on them. Good representation. We're not doing too much to get sued. On the back, you got some pants, pockets, and everything. This all looks good. I just wish they had done something different with the head because also he comes with an interchangeable head and two other hands. He does have the twipping hands, which are hinged horizontal. I mean, uh, they're, here, they're hinged horizontally, but you can put the flipping hands on there, which look okay. And he has another head masked. Now, the thing about this head is the ball joint is here, which is exactly where you, you can't replace this with any other Miles figures that you might have in your collection. But the eyes look good. I really like the head. But to get that, you just pop his head off. But you're going to pop it off at the joint at the bottom. You can see it's also got like flat pieces on there, so it's a whatever that shape is. I can't tell you what that shape is, but when you pop that on, but the hard part is because this is a barbell joint, you're gonna really have to, okay, never mind. I said that and then I was able to accomplish it fairly easy. So now you've got him with his mask up and I kind of wish they had included the option to put the hood up, you know, just something else. It just seems off. I don't know, I, I, I feel like this, I, I guess it looks like that iconic scene, just the hood isn't up. It's not quite perfect, but it is pretty good. Now, articulation-wise, he does have a disc hinge with the peg and the foot. Goes back about that far, back forward about that far. It will rotate in the peg, which actually has a little bit of ratcheting. This is really a unique... Oh, went the wrong way. This has a really unique body mold on it because it's very skinny. So I'm willing to accept a couple things. Like I, I should be more accepting of it because... It does some things that we haven't really seen in other figures. Like these pants are like uh, complete other parts to the legs, but there's a joint up here. So, but anyway, there's no cut at the calf or anything, but there is one that's up inside of the pants. I'm not sure how far up in there it is. So he just has the calf cut, which is further up. Double jointed knees. He can't kick his own butt, but he can go about that far. I don't like, and he can go forward about that far in the legs. I really don't talk about how far forward but he can he can get a good pretty good split going just not quite full van damnation he does have a ball joint at the lower torso just a ball joint at waist pretty much and a hinge at the upper torso which will go forward very far and it's getting it to move without moving the joint at the bottom and it goes back about that far you do have that double barbell joint at the head, so he can get some pretty good neck articulation. Forward, back, side to side. It, it's, it's all kinds of movement at the neck. Although a little bit loose. A little bit loose after I got that in there. You got a universal joint at the shoulder. No, uh, <laughs> there, are there any freaking uh, butterfly joints in this way? Jeez. Um, got some uh, ratcheting, soft ratchet, complete 360. You got the uh, hinge is at the lower part of the elbow. So no double jointed elbows, but you can get pretty far. Eh, could be better. It's actually just over 45 degrees, but you will get rotation there at the peg, which is up in the upper arm. And these are all hinged horizontally at his fist. They're very small fists. They spin 360. So yeah, very small figure, but on a different body mold. And it's not too bad. And for comparison, here he is next to the uh, Venomized Miles. And to say regular Miles Morales, which honestly, this is probably my favorite buck for Miles to be on. This one right here where he's slightly muscular. Although this is with the art style of the movie, so I'm not going to complain. But I like this one. I really I really wish they would make a Miles in the full suit on this buck. Just to see what they can do. I, you know, that's just me. This figure could be better. He has... He comes in at just about five and five eighths inches tall at the top of his head. And by far my favorite figure in the line, guys, this is the Peter B. Parker figure. Um, Peter was my, my, my soul animal in this movie. I love his character in the movie. And we've gotten plenty of Spider-Man. Everyone's like, we should have gotten a Spider-Man from the movie. No, no, we've got plenty of Spider-Man that'll fill the void of a suited Spider-Man. We needed this, this Spider-Man. This sweatpants wearing, long coat, wrong shoe having, soda sipping, Peter Parker with the five with the uh, five o'clock shadow, or in his case probably two weeks. So let's get him out of the way here. Take a look. The box coming in. Last box we're gonna look at. Got Spider Verse logo there. Peter V Parker on the side. 
on the front, I mean, on the side, you've got Peter B. Parker and his unshaved face. You got some particles around him. A little curvy somewhere going. Hey, those are my particles. Peter Parker mentors Miles Morales, an all new Spider Man, to understand the importance of power and responsibility. So, getting the Peter in here, man, I, I love this figure. Look at, look at that dumb grin on his face. That dumb, I don't care, have a care in the world. And, man, the thing I love about these, they are very close to the animation so much. But I think Peter really knocks it out of the park. You can see his suit on underneath his coat, his beat up coat that he was wearing. He comes with a soda accessory. Yeah, he comes with a soda accessory. More figures need to come with food accessories. So you got the sweatpants that are just a little bit too short for him. The mismatched uh, sketcher you got here on his foot. And then the Timbaland boot over here, which looks nice. I love how the laces are not tied on the mold. That, that just nails it for me. But yeah, the hair looks good. The face has that stupid grin on it, and just, yeah, this, this Peter Parker figure is the best. And his hands are bare. He's got just an open hand as well. I mean, an open hand here. One that is flushed without, just to hold the soda. But the other accessories he comes with are different hands, which why would you replace the hands on here? He does come with two uh, thwipping hands. That's fine, thwipping hands. I don't, you know, that's cool. And then you got two pairs of fists. I'm never going to use them just because uh, I'm keeping that soda in his hand. And he does come with an alternate head, which has his mask halfway pulled up. But and he's got a little bit more of a sterner look on his face. But the eyebrow up. Yeah, this this looks good. And um, but I'm going to leave him with the the hair out like that, just because I don't I don't think we need this head. I mean, I don't need this head. I need this Peter to be represented as he is in my collection. But yeah, there you go, the uh, unmasked head, which, you know what, for, for this review, we'll go ahead and just do the disservice of popping it off so you can see what it looks like on the body. But why would you? There you go, so there he has the, the mask halfway on, and he just looks kinda like a cat burglar wearing a, uh, a knit cap that's got a Spider-Man, got Spider-Man eyes on it. So anyway, articulation on the figure. He does have a very unique um, articulation scheme. His cut at the calf is right here above the ankle, so it can spin there. So if you're wondering about that, um, same thing with this other leg. That's where the that's where your thigh or calf cut is going to be, just a little bit lower. Now the boot is articulated with disc hinge. Oh, this is actually a softer plastic too. Man, he's got full go all the way down there. Goes forward about that far peg is in the foot you can rotate around there this figure actually comes with this side facing forward at least on mine it did and it was like like this when it came out of the package and it looked awkward uh yeah like this what you do is just take it spin it and then just bring it around you know i guess it's just the way they assembled and the other foot same articulation just be careful when you're doing this because it starts to come out here grab it down here but same thing, the foot can go down that far, goes back about that, goes forward about that far. Let me bring my camera out just a little bit more, since I'm always getting off camera. The double jointed knees will go up about, ooh, that joint is, there we go, now it's moving. Uh, can he kick his own butt? Let's see. This big Timbaland, nope, he can't, but he does have a uh, thigh cut, 360 degrees. Got leg articulation will go forward about that far. Pretty good. Goes back about that far. He cannot, wait a minute. No, no, no. And he cannot full Van Damme Nation, just almost. No, not even close. The jacket is really hindrance things. But I didn't get this figure for posability. I got him because he does have slight, <laughs> a slight paunch in there, by the way. But he does have a ball jointed lower torso, which... Ugh, trying to get this guy and move him around. But yeah, the ball joint will express a lot. So he can, he has some pretty good articulation for a guy wearing a bunch of, well, he can kind of stick out the gut a little bit more. There we go. Peak human performance here. And he's got a ball joint up here at the torso. It's a little limited because of the coat. It's very bulky, very stiff to work with. 
The shoulders will go about that far up on a universal joint, 360 degree as well, cut at the bicep, 360 degrees. Got double jointed elbows, goes about that far, and these hands are all hinged horizontally, just like all the flipping and webbed hands. And he does have a disc bowl um, at the head, as you saw. You can go about that far sideways, that far forward. The hinge really is, good, is what's going to give you a lot more of the articulation than the ball joint. But yeah, and just because it's bothering me now, we're going to go ahead and put this head back on there and give him his drink back and then do some comparisons and bring in the build a figure. Up for a bit of a comparison, here he is next to the pizza spidey mold. And this Peter Parker figure comes in at just about six and five eighths inches tall. And for the build a figure, we have Stilt Man. Yes, when they announced this guy, I was like, wow, we're getting Stilt Man. Stilt Man's kind of lame, but still, it deserves a figure. I will give him that. Now, the unique thing about Stilt Man is if you bought Red Ninjas, you get another set of legs, which are extenders about this, well, like this. And they actually come with another set of feet, which, okay, you do need one, but then you're stuck with a bunch of feet after that. But they're about six inches tall, so I bought about four of them. And uh, I would not recommend going past four because you can't even stand it at that point. Uh, even though this figure comes with a base to help it stand. Um, but you know what? If I see a bunch of red ninjas on clearance, I might get more. Who knows? But for now, I got four. And I think that's comically enough that uh, the height my stilt man needs to arise. So now, he does come with this base, which has four pegs in it. Uh, it's a translucent plastic. You can see. But it has four pegs for various um, um, poses you want to put them in. But honestly, without the base, if you get him perfect, he, will, he won't stand. I, I, I need to just shut my mouth. Uh, but then let's go ahead and bring him down to the level here. He does come with a couple of accessories um, before we get into articulation. He comes with a money case, which comes with Prowler. Just open it up. It's got a couple of hundreds in there. He's got some fat stacks. It is a separate piece. You can just take that out. Actually got a little, there's the, that's where the die pack is. So and You can close that up and put it in his hand. He just made a getaway. It's a nice little briefcase. It's got a little bit of a texture on it. Makes it look like a leather thing, but hey. As well as, he does come with two sets of fists, by the way, in that silver color there. Want that? And he comes with two open hands, which are on the body, and a pistol that we've seen with several figures now. But you know, why not? Hey, it's Stilt Man. If he gets a gun, I guess that's that's a a good thing for him. We've seen this with a couple of the alien figures that came with the crossbones figure, but yeah, it's just in silver plastic. We've seen this spacey blaster before. But look at a stilt man, which I'm going to have to bring him down a little bit so we can make out the character here. He does have that, look at that stupid look on his face. Look, it is stilt man. Uh, the paint looks pretty good. It's mostly the silver plastic. You got the paint, the white paint on the eyes, the flesh on the face. And yeah, that everything else is just this silver plastic. And I kind of wish there was a little bit more paint on this guy. Um... He does have this weird cut where the missiles or whatever those are on, on his waist, they they're cut. So when he turns, it just they 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 split in half. On the back, you have a backpack or whatever powers these stupid legs. <laughs> it's a dumb character. I love that you can see his antenna out from behind this thing. That this is why he gets his butt kicked. He can't see a punch coming. But then again, I guess he's way up in the air, you know. And of course, the legs are just that telescope telescoping telescoping uh stuff and the feet are just like little little elephant feet it's a dumb character but he got a figure this is where we're at with marvel legends we're just going to start getting the dumbest characters now now um he is like a standard six inch size but when you get him in just the base with the base legs i should probably put him on the stand for this review but uh, with the base legs, oh my God. Had to put this idiot back on the stand so I can actually, uh, with, so with the base set of legs and everything you get with them, Still Man comes in at just about, let's see, 11 and seven eighths inches tall. So it's pretty tall with just one set of legs, but you can go crazy, go crazy as much as you like. Articulation wise, 
He does have some little ball joints, not ball joints, uh, disc uh, hinges at the feet. You're not going to get a lot out of it. It goes back about that far, it goes forward about that far. So you can get him in like a walking kind of mode. Uh, right here where it disconnects at the bottom, you do have a 360 degree joint, but it will just disconnect. This is where you can put more legs on. You're going to be taking these off to uh, increase his body. There's no joints here, no knee joints, no knees at all. It does twist 180 degrees at the bottom of the hips. I don't like taking mine off the hips, but that's where the cut is right there. Uh, waist articulation, 360 degrees. I need to make him do a split so we can see that. You got a hinge at the torso that only goes forward. The backpack prevents him from going any farther back. Shoulders are just, mine's, are, mine's a little loose too, by the way. I, I forget whose body model they borrowed here, but they will go up about that far, 360 degree. This uh, back piece actually is a separate piece that you get, and you have to like put it on there. Put it, put that on before you put the head on, but 360 degree, soft ratchet, 360 degree cut at the bicep. You have uh, double jointed elbows. Let's go about that far. Come on, flex for me. There we go. Go about that far, you do get a little bit of hindrance with this metal, with this piece right here. Back and forth at the wrist, 360 degree rotation, and same thing, they're all hinged horizontally, and the head is on a ball joint, but if it gets in there, like this just did, it can start to bend your antenna, so you can get it forward about yay far, and kind of put his head behind this circular piece here. Yeah, it'll go all the way in there, but you don't want that, because the antenna will probably start to bend. But yeah, here's your Build-A-Figure, guys. Best of 2021. I'm calling it already Stilt Man. Don't you fall. And there you have it, guys. That's the Spider-Man Marvel Legends into the Spider-Verse wave. I'd say all these figures are pretty solid. On This is a good wave. I like the Build-A-Figure just because it's unique and it's something I never thought we'd get. Also, we got Frogman this wave and a bunch of Into the Spider-Verse figures. This is a pretty good wave. I highly recommend it. Yeah, they're popping up, at shelves. They're popping up on shelves right now uh, in your Targets and your Walmart. So go get them. I, I can't even recommend like any higher than the other because I think the whole wave is pretty solid. Just a few misses here and there, but nothing can be perfect. It, these are pretty good though. Anyway, guys, I'm Jason the X. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back with always more video content here. Check out, check it, check us out on um, at Alternate Heads Podcast on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jason the X. Until next time, guys. I'll catch you later.